been so long since we have last spoken. I hope you're well. I missed you, truly. You know I did. Considering there is a notable amount of newcomers to this channel. Hi, I'm Dakota. I write and I read and I still study both of those things at university. For the most part, I just exist though, gloriously. <laughs> I'm gonna jump straight into this video with a confession. <laughs> Father, I have sinned. This was initially meant to be a 30 books in 30 days challenge video because I was gonna read a book every day of July with one gap. Uh, I read seven books in seven days religiously. I was so hopeful and so naive. And then at the seven day mark, I decided to abandon ship. Here's why. <laughs> Today we will be exploring, well I will be exploring, why you shouldn't consume literature like blueberries at a picnic. Weird simile. <laughs> it's summer and I have a picnic upcoming and I just stopped writing to film this video so my brain's still in creative writing mode. Forgive me. Moving on. This will be my take on mass consumption of literature is detrimental to the overall reading experience rather than beneficial and this is displayed by challenges such as I read for 24 hours straight or 30 books in 30 days or even just seven books in seven days or reading a 700 plus book in one sitting and the disclaimer because I know what you're thinking I know if you've been here before you know that I speed read you know that I do exactly that <laughs> you know that that has been my approach to reading thus far in life read all of it and read all of it now I feel like recently I've started to step back and realize that reading is this beautiful thing that has been the blood of my life for so long. It is this magical escape and it is so sacred to me. And it took me trying to read 30 books in 30 days to realize that that is not the way that I want to do it anymore. <laughs> there is absolutely no shade in this video to those who do do that because I do that. <laughs> this video is a safe space for those who speed read and mass consume literature and for those who read slowly and delicately. Don't pick up a book every so often because life is busy. Anyway, here is my epiphany. Call it growth, if you will. Maturity. <laughs> Call it prioritizing comprehension. I'm going to break this video up into two parts. The first part will be the humble beginnings of my reading challenge vlogged the first seven days of me reading and then my eventual epiphany and then my inevitable withdrawal. <laughs> Part two will be a chat, just a little silly unscripted chat about my thoughts and feelings, the importance of comprehension that I have found thus far. So stick around. Before we jump right into it and pull apart my failed vlog attempt <laughs> for the 30 books in 30 days challenge, can I steal a moment of your time, please, to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace? So Squarespace is an all-in-one online platform that you can use to create and maintain websites such as blogs and online stores. I say this from experience because I built my own website with Squarespace and it was fun and it was rewarding and I am proud of it. There's so many elements that I can play with like blogging tools, member areas, viewing my analytics, hooking up all my other socials so I can go straight from A to B. We absolutely love Love Squarespace on this channel and when I tell you it is worth your time I mean it is worth your time because it is genuinely such an incredible process from start to finish. You can head to squarespace.com to start your free trial and when you're ready to launch your own website you can head to squarespace.com slash Dakota Warren to get 10% off your first website or domain today. Thank you Squarespace for your continual support and now we will jump straight into my vlog. <laughs> Good morning. Um, it is day one. I should face myself while I do this. I want to hold myself accountable and so I'm showing you. It's the 1st of July and it's 1 p.m. I have finished this. I finished this at the coffee shop this morning. It's Rachel Cosk's adaption on Medea, which I'm obsessed with. And this is the Philosophical Dialogues by Stanley Frederick Sharp. This I found in a thrift shop. This is Kyla. Uh, hi, Kyla. <laughs> I don't know how I look. I'm just hoping it's good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I can't show you my face because I'm chronically hungover, but 
It's the 3rd of July. I'm currently reading this and I've just woken up and I'm probably still drunk, but I'm okay. Evidence that it is the 4th of July. I've read four books. It is now day five and I have read five books and I'm on to my sixth. Yesterday I read The Days of Abandonment by Elena Ferrante. Really incredible commentary on female rage. Um, kind of terrifying. Today is read a little bit bigger. <laughs> Not that big, but considerably bigger. Um, the Deloriad by Missouri Williams. Very excited for this one. I started it a little bit, as you can see, this morning while I was in bed. This is what I just read. I kind of think that this challenge sucks because I'm not retaining anything I've read. I'm retaining it, but I could be retaining it so much more. I was just crying. Can you tell? No. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I just made that up. <laughs> I am. Um, I've had a few days off and that's because I was busy writing. Normalize. <laughs> Normalize not following through with something you said you were going to do. <laughs> Normalize not following through with hypothetical commitments upon finding out that they were not right for you. I am here to say it. Normalize bailing. <laughs> Normalize flaking. Normalize changing plans if it means there's going to be an overall more beneficial outcome. What I found with this challenge, as I started to touch on in my last entry, if you will, was that I was not able to fully digest these books because I was going straight on to the next one. And my method of consumption, of comprehension, is to sit with something for a while and think about it. Not necessarily sit and just think about what I have done. Like, you know when your parents would send you to your room and say, think about what you've done. No. <laughs> no, just like when I'm walking to catch the train, I think about some chapters that I just read so I can pull them apart a bit and dissect them and put myself into the shoes of the character and look forward to what I was going to read next and sit with it. I'll finish a book and then I'll do something mundane, like wash dishes and I will realize things about the book that I hadn't realized when I was reading it because I'm thinking about it. This is applicable to all literature, but specifically my taste in literature is very heavy to digest, to put it briefly, because I do opt for more disturbing, shocking, telling literature rather than happy little love stories. <laughs> and so I find a way that I have developed comprehension of this is to let myself sit with it. I think I've over explained that, but do you understand? <laughs> I will always, always, always be an over-explainer. Always. And that's okay. Also, my first thought was speed reading. I knew that I had to consume a lot of literature for this challenge, and so I'd sit down with a book and I'd have a spare, say, three hours out of my busy schedule, so I'd use that to read a book. And so I'd skim over certain parts that I somehow deemed as not necessary, which is silly. Because I'm thinking now of how much I've missed and now I'm thinking, do I have to go back and reread these books? Now, skim reading can be a skill and I absolutely utilize this skill when it is necessary, especially within my literature degree. <laughs> but in this scenario, it was a necessity that I had created of my own accord. Who was I trying to prove it to? Myself? Wow, I'm so brave. I can read so many books so fast. What is the point of these challenges? Why do we have to make every single thing a challenge? Why can't we just enjoy books? On top of that, reading a book in one sitting, it can be beneficial, especially if it's a smaller book and you can consume it all at once and it's like watching a movie but reading it because it is this entire thing in all of its glory that you have now consumed. But larger books, I don't recommend reading in one sitting. I don't, as much as I do it. I don't recommend it. By the end of the book, the beginning of the book was slipping from my mind because I didn't have that space between chapters to sit with it. To some, I had poured too much information into my sweet little squishy brain at once. And as if that wasn't enough, as soon as I would put that book down, I would pick up another. So all of this information pouring into my brain was just getting kind of squished around and then went out the other ear. Am I making sense? Probably not. I don't really care. We're just chatting. I wasn't giving myself any real opportunity or chance to sit with the book 
think about the book and construct a carefully considered and henceforth valid opinion. That also means that their accounts and reviews and opinions that I would be sharing with you would be henceforth of lower quality and inherently lackluster. If I'm trying to rack my brain to remember what happened in a chapter that I skim read so I could read the next book, I'm not gonna have the full plot of the story in my head. I think it is really important as a broad general statement for anyone who reads or consumes any kind of media that you want to keep with you to consume it, consider it, mull it over, close your eyes and in the space between sleeping and wake, consider different perspectives and imagine the environment that was described and put yourself in the character's shoes and understand different elements of the plot. Perhaps that's because I am a literature fanatic and I would like to exist in their world. Perhaps it's because I'm a writer and I'm trying to build upon my own skills by doing as such. Perhaps it's because I'm insane. <laughs> Reading challenges can be so beneficial in the way that they do encourage you to read more. Anything that encourages people to read more is great and I endorse that. But I think that we should remember to consume consciously and it can be so easy to get swept away with these challenges because things do become competitive. And I know this is perhaps cliche, but quality over quantity is a very much valid argument that will forever stand true. Outside of that, I have nothing to prove. You have nothing to prove. Read what you want to read when you feel like it. I don't know why we're always making competitions of everything. I'm not saying I'm slowing down with reading, but I'm saying I'm not speeding up with reading. I'm going to continue at my own pace and read what I want to read when I feel like it. Because that's working for me pretty well. I know I've said this before in previous videos, but I feel like it's relevant to say it again right now and say it again in bold capitals. Consume consciously. Another thing to note for me personally is that as of recent, I have found myself flooded with inspiration and motivation to write. I feel creativity is taboo in the sense that people assume creatives to constantly create. It's a common assumption for creativity to be constant. Creativity is cyclical, inspiration is situational, and art is subjective to all of the above regardless of the medium that it's carried out in. If I feel like reading, I'll read, but if I feel like writing, I'm going to write. And if I feel like sitting on my shower floor and crying, I will sit on my shower floor and cry. Who am I to rob myself of such complex needs and desires? <laughs> that was sarcasm. They're simple needs and desires. Here's me over explaining again. That said, I just had an idea for dialogue in my novel, so I'm going to go and write that. Quickly going to reiterate my point about doing things for yourself. Read because you want to read. Don't read because you want bigger numbers, or because you want to say that you've read seven books in seven days. You're not proving anything to anyone. And if you want to do it, that's fine. And if you find you can comprehend between books, that's fine. Am I the outlier? <laughs> Thank you for spending this pocket of space and time with me. I love you a lot. And until next time.